these bright fluorescent lights, incandescent lights, then certainly you want to make up for that. And how you do that is by having this partition where the ladies can go by behind them and have this privacy that otherwise was afforded to them by the natural darkness. They said, oh, we didn't know that. We didn't realize that. I said, that's okay. There's another point too, though. I'd like to ask you this. You see how Islam is providing for the needs of the woman, right? They said, yeah. I said, Islam is a lot more than you realize because it gives always a balance. And there's a beautiful balance in Islam when we talk about the difference between the men and the women. Men have different needs than women and women have different needs than men. And Islam is providing for that as we just saw in this example. So then I asked them a question. If the best of the best of your men and the best of the best of your women are not allowed to get married and to procreate and to have children, doesn't that mean then that only the worst of the worst of your men and the worst of the worst of your women are getting married and having babies? And ultimately, what would be the society that only the worst of the people are giving birth and only the worst of the people are continuing in the society. Whereas in Islam, the best of the men and the best of the women are encouraged to get married, to have children, to procreate, and then to raise them up as good, responsible citizens, as good, responsible Muslims, obeying God and doing His will here on earth. They said, well, we never thought about that before. I said, well, you know, really, that's something for us all to think about. Because Islam is not something that's a man-made religion. It's a complete way of life. Giving the balance to everything. Giving the rights and the limits that go along with the proper balance of life. So we understand from this that Islam is not making life difficult. Rather, it's solving problems from God's point of view, not from our point of view. And then I said, you know, because you've asked me this question, it means God has guided you to come to us to learn about this message. Therefore, this is your opportunity to think about it. You need to pray about this and ask God to guide you. And with that, I left them. The next year, I came back and I visited the same community. And I was in the same masjid. And I was giving another lecture. And I said, let me tell you what happened when I was here last year. After my lecture, there were two girls and they asked me why we have this partition here between the men and the women. And I explained to them that this is something that we put here so that the women would have a place for privacy. They could remove their hijab and they could nurse their babies and they could just relax in general. And then I asked those women, what about in your religion where you have the nuns and the priests who are not allowed to get married. They're not allowed to have children. And we all know what that could lead to. Some very serious consequences. And while I was talking about this same subject, everybody in the masjid started laughing. Ha, 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 ha. I said, why are you laughing? They said, Sheikh, we know about it. I said, what do you mean? They said, after you left, those women came back and they made shahada. They entered Islam. And they're on the other side of that petition right now. I said, oh my God. They said, yeah, they understood the message and they became Muslims. I said, Allahu Akbar. And that particular incident is the one that caused me to realize how important it is for us to begin to understand our religion, our way of life of Islam and be able to present it in simple terms. Because not only is it good for us, it's good for them and it gives people the chance to enter Islam. And since that time until now, we've been trying to work on the methodology or the menhaj of our Prophet wasallam, peace be upon him, to know and understand the presentation of the real meaning behind what's Islam. And subhanAllah, it's led us to have this very program we're watching right now. This segment of this program called Lifting the Fog is a result of that incident which occurred a number of years ago in that masjid in Ramadan. And since then, when we've presented answers to questions, we start with that same format. Where we tell them, thank you for asking about our religion. In our religion, we have the truth. And we must speak the truth, otherwise we can be punished by Allah. And we have the proof to back it up. What we say is documented. It's not something I can make up or change or alter to suit the situation. It stays firm and concrete 
all the time. This helps me when I present to you this message because I don't have to waver or quaff one way or the other. I know what I'm saying is backed up by 1400 years of documentation. And then while you're listening to the answer, consider if this is a good way for you. And if you like this way of submitting to God's will, maybe it can change your life. And I always ask the people to go and pray in your heart and ask Allah to guide you. And speaking of being guided, we're going to take a break, we're going to come back, we're going to be on this same subject, talking about the way Islam treats the women, and in particular how to answer these questions when people come to you with these harsh attacks. Stay tuned for more right here on Huda TV. This is Yusuf Estes reminding you it's only Allah who guides. May Allah guide us all. I mean. My name is Sharif Tuni, and this is brought to you from Huda TV. Um, in today's edition, we'll be discussing about uh, the day and night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala equated the samawat with darkness, the firmament with darkness, and equated the earth with light. Why? Are there really pillars that cannot be seen? Or is it an unseen uh, pillar? Everything is running, but the relationships are fixed. Yes. So that it would appear to people as if nothing is running, you see. We are destroying the, our environment with our own hands. And that's why the Quran says, ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس ليذيقهم بعض الذي عملوا لعلهم يرجعون. بسم الله. Alhamdulillah. I want to continue in this segment talking about the questions that people present to us about women. And I'll give you another example of something that happened during a lecture. This happened to be in my own hometown in Virginia. I was at the Nova College giving a talk over there. A woman walked in right in the middle of our talk and...